Okay. Okay, we have a PE770 here that's been brought in this morning. This machine was recently serviced and the customer took it home and uh, she's had it for about two weeks and she's having the same issues that she had prior to it being serviced. And so today we're going to do a little bit of troubleshooting to see what might be the problem. <clears throat> she has explained to me what threads she's using, what bobbin thread she's using, the design she's using, and the spool cap she's using. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start at the beginning and we are going to uh, reboot the machine, which means basically we're going to unthread it and rethread it. Now, right when she brought it in, I noticed that there was one little problem, and that is that there's a lot of thread uh, right in here. Now, that's your tension disc, and because the thread's been breaking a lot and everything, she's had some remnants of thread to get hung up in this area here, so we're going to remove that first. Now, in prior videos, I've talked about how you can unscrew this screw here, and you can pop this little this little cap off. Oh, well that's good to know. Yeah. I didn't, like I that. wondered how you got that thread out of there. Yeah, so okay. some over here. And you wouldn't think that just something this small would mm -hmm. cause such a big problem, but it does. Okay. And then... Me and my cousin some. both wondered how you were supposed to get the thread out of there. <laughs> yeah, there's some. Um, I may have to go get the tweezers to get some of this. Let's see if I can grab that little piece. <clears throat> now, because um, I'm also seeing a little bit of thread on the uptake lever, I'm uh -huh. going to go ahead and take this part off, okay. too. The screw for this is in the back. Okay. So we're going to loosen that. And this comes right off. Oh, and all then, right. Let's see if I can get to any other thread. Now, you can take this piece off, too, mm -hmm. but... You know, that's getting into a little bit more complex uh -huh. things that we don't really want the customer to be taking off uh -huh. too much stuff because then you can't get it off. But I'm going to go ahead and... Probably see. couldn't get it back on, knowing me. <laughs> see here. We can loosen it a little bit just to get to that thread. Okay. I'm going to go grab a set of tweezers. Okay. Okay, I'm back with the tweezers and the little tool to try to get some of this thread off of this uptake lever. It may not be much on there, but I'll just get it off since we're here. around in here if you raise and you want your presser foot to be raised up and okay. then you can you can look in the tension disc there's uh -huh. the tension disc and I'm seeing a little bit of something right back there okay um, let's make sure there's no lint in there or anything that would restrict the thread from having tension to it. and I always like to look up under this little plate here too because sometimes sometimes some junk gets uh -huh. up there and that okay. causes problems that's looking good Okay, so all of it's cleaned out. You can turn the flywheel and it goes up and down and it's just fine. Okay. Now, when I'm turning the flywheel, you may not hear this on the video, but I'm hearing a clicking noise. So I'm going to go ahead and change out the needle too. Okay. So I like to use a nickel for that. Oh, okay. Because it loosens that screw just perfectly. Take the old needle out and we're going to put a new needle in. So, a lot of people ask me, how often do you change the needle? If I'm having problems with breaking thread, mm -hmm. breaking thread that's the first thing I do is change the needle. Okay. And while we have the video here, we want to go ahead and point out this little piece right here. Uh huh. This little piece of metal is bent down. It's not supposed to be below this number six thread guide. Okay. It's supposed to be right up there in between the number six and that piece of metal. Oh, okay. Thread line, and it holds the thread that's in there. That's where my thread wouldn't hold in there. Yep, that's, that's supposed to hold your thread okay. in there. Now, 
This is something that has to be replaced by the technician. But just for right now, I'm just bending it back up there just, okay. just so we can do a test, okay? Okay. So I'm going to, uh, before I put the new needle in, I'm going to go ahead and He replaced clean. something, but I don't remember yeah, he probably, what he replaced. He probably replaced that because he, he has to replace that, that a lot of times. Don't Why see? does the thread get um down in there when okay. you're... It's, sew it and just jam up. Okay, so because we had junk in the tension mm -hmm. disc, there was not enough tension on the top thread, and it was just freely going. Oh, down well, to the okay. So okay. Anytime you have a problem under here, it's usually because of something going okay. up here. Okay. Okay. Now I'm that gonna, makes sense. You want to keep that clean in there. Mm -hmm. So before okay. you start a project, clean it out. Okay. And then uh, normally on these, there's like a little uh, triangle right yeah. here. And there's a little white dot right yeah. here. And they're supposed to match up. So that's okay. how you know where that goes back in there. Okay. I finally learned that. Okay. You put that in. Then you take this piece and you slide it back on. And I'm seeing that you know, your uh, needle kind of plate. Scratched. Yeah, your needle plate covers. Yes, the needle's been hitting it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tighten these screws just a little. Yeah, I don't think I tightened them back the other night. I got so disgusted, I just got up and walked off. Okay, so sometimes when your needle plate cover gets um, hit a bunch, uh -huh. it'll create a little, like a jagged little piece on mm -hmm. it. And you may not be able to see a jagged little piece there, but the thread is real sensitive to it. And it might be causing the thread to shred a little bit okay. there and break. Okay. Okay, so we've got... <coughs> The bottom taken care of. Um, now I'm going to put the needle in. One thing we did not really do was inspect the bobbin case, but that should be okay. He just serviced the machine. Needle goes all the way up, okay? okay? And then you tighten this with that nickel really pretty tight. Keep, even though you think it's tight, keep going a little bit more. Okay. Okay, make sure it's really good and firm tight. Now we sell these um, pre-filled bobbins from Filtech. Class 15 is what you need for this machine. So I'm going to go ahead and put one of these in. Okay. And you asked me which way. Mm -hmm. Which way? There's a little <laughs> picture right there. Okay. okay. And it's showing the thread coming this way. So that's counterclockwise, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's what I thought. When you put it in, put your finger on it. And then wind it around that path. Okay. And when you put your finger on it, it kind of firmly holds it in place. Okay. So that, that thread's going where it's supposed to go. If it if it doesn't stay over there, it's okay. That just that's cutting it off to okay. a certain length for you. All right. Then you put this back on. Okay. Now I'm gonna put this guy back together. Okay. I had loosened the screws. So I'm gonna tighten it back. Seems simple when you do it. <laughs> Put this back on. Sometimes I have a hard time getting this right back exactly where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. and just keep fiddling with it and eventually get it. It'll fall in together. place. There we mm -hmm. go. Now, tighten this screw back. I'm glad to know that. Now I know how to get the thread out without trying to blow it out. And then this little piece has to go back on, and it's a little bit tricky, okay? Okay. There is, um, there's a little pin right here. Uh-huh. And then there's, a, usually there's like a little hole right here. It looks like yours might be slightly, oh, there it is over here. So, no, it isn't. All right. So normally there's like a little hole right here, and that mm -hmm. pin goes in that hole, but it's... Okay. Oh, I got it upside down. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. There's the hole. Oh, okay. Okay. So you want to kind of put it on there, and then you want to kind of lift up and get that pin into the hole. Okay. And then you kind of push it down into place. Oh, okay. okay. It's, it's kind of... You just have to be firm with it. Okay. Then you tighten that screw back. Good to have a magnetized mm -hmm. screw. Okay. Now we will thread the machine up. Now I'm going to use your thread that you brought okay. with you, Miss Guterman. Is that good thread? This is good thread. Okay. This is polyester embroidery thread. 
And I like to go ahead and take the sticker all the way off. We don't want the thread being grabbed by okay. that sticky sticker. Even though it has the number on it. You might yeah. want to write the number down somewhere. Okay, and then we put it on like this. Now, you, whenever you have this size spool, if you, if you want to use a spool cap, you need to use the small one. The one okay. that's the size. Didn't I bring the small one? I don't see it, but. Here it is. Okay, it's in here. there it is. That yeah. would be the size I I had for it. that thread. But okay. if you can get away without using these, then don't use them. Oh, okay. Because then your thread, you can see your thread. Okay. It's not getting wrapped around there without you. Uh huh. Okay. okay. So. Yeah, you, it does that sometimes. All right. So before I thread it, I'm going to go ahead and calibrate. That means say okay, and it does its thing. All right. Mm hmm. Okay. Now I'll thread it. When I get to this point where the tension distance, uh -huh. I like to kind of hold it over here just okay. so I know it's getting down in there. Keep going. Notice my presser foot is up. Uh -huh. You always want to thread the machine with the presser foot up. Okay. okay. Cut it off, and then you should be able to thread it. Oh, okay. Through. You don't have to hold it. You just cut yeah. it off, and okay. Right. Because I always you hold just it. Put it through there, and then number eight is the blade, and you cut the thread okay. off. Okay. That's the perfect length. And then you do that. Oh, okay. It makes All a little right. loop, and you pull that little loop. That's out. easier than how I've been doing it. A okay. lot easier. Okay. Cool. Now. Let's see. I'm going to get her hoop ready. Okay. Let me pause it. Something. Ready? Mm hmm. Okay, we are, this customer would like to put her design on this type of blanket. Now, this is where she was having her problems. And she's had, she's tried several times to get it right. And so, here's what we're going to do you need to have a big enough piece of stabilizer to fit in the hoop. Okay. So this is going to fit in the hoop here. Okay. So you always put it in the hoop because sometimes I just stick it under there. You're not supposed to do that? Um, so that's a very good question. Uh, if you are using a stabilizer that has an adhesive, then you can stick something to that. Okay. The stabilizer would be in the hoop mm -hmm. and then you could stick it to that. With this type of fabric, though, you would not want to use an adhesive stabilizer because it's, it's you're never going to get it off. Oh, okay. So we're going to use a lightweight tearaway. Okay. But then I am going to spray it a little bit with this 505 spray, and that will make it a little sticky for us. Mm -hmm. And then we won't have any movement between the blanket and the stabilizer. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to spray it, and now I'm going to put it on the back side and uh, smooth it out. You want it to, um, you just want to put your, I don't have a good table to do this, mm -hmm. but here we go. All right. And then when you hoop it, you want it to be hooped pretty firmly. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and smooth this out a little better. There we go. And we don't have any wrinkles, and we've got a nice firm area. And we're going to go ahead and put the hoop on. Sure you ever put it on the bottom side of it? <laughs> yeah, I had to make sure the bottom was not. That's what I do a lot. Okay, now <coughs> it's in there good and you don't have any gapping in uh -huh. the fabric. Okay. And you've got nice firm backside for the machine okay. to work with, okay? Okay. And it's in there good, you don't want it to pop off, okay? Okay. Now let's find the design. She has it here on this USB. It says load USB. Sometimes you have to work with a little. There we go. Now, which one? It's way it? toward the, way toward the end, I believe. And I think it's turned sideways. Okay, is it in one of these folders? No, it'll be by itself. It'll okay. say. It's not going any anywhere. That's as far as it goes. Mm -hmm. Go again. Let me see then. So A B C cross, Dove something fill. Mm -mm. Polar bear, mm -hmm. rose something. Should have been on that Script, one. snowman, snowman thankful, ABC. Huh. Not I had a lot more than that on there. It must be in one of the folders. Must be. Oh, well. Because that's the only one I ever use. The only one I got, actually. Could I have erased it somehow? 
Oh, we have um, it pulled in a bunch more this time. Oh, well, okay. Seventy-nine. Okay. So um, you're saying that it's yeah, I'm yeah. Just gonna go backwards this time. Yeah. And it's supposed to say go Bama, I think. Mm-hmm. A roll tie, roll either tie. one, yeah. Try that one? That'll be fine. It does that sometimes too. I think it's still working. So one thing, good thing to remember is try not to load too many designs on your USB device. Oh, okay. You want to just do a few, and then. Um, that way, the machine doesn't have to take so long. So oh, okay. Load them in there. Okay. So get so, another one. Right. That one just come so, with a machine, so I just been using it. Right. So you may want to store all of your designs on here, but then when you get ready to use one of them, maybe move the design to another okay. USB drive. Okay. And then that way, the machine will just pull it in quickly. Okay. So see if we can find it again and see if it'll work this time. It's darkened, so mm -hmm. we should be able to hit the pocket. There we go. Now it's ready. Okay. And it's telling me I can use a five by seven hoop. Okay. That's when it's dark, dark like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you want to move it within the hoop, you go to adjust layout, and then you can move it around. Okay. So I'll just try to move it down a little bit, and you can't move it around too much in here because it's so large. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's okay. Put this on. Roll Tide and green should be interesting. <laughs> green and red. <coughs> okay. Then you want to make sure there's no excess blanket that's okay. under the hoop anywhere. Now, do you use the clear on top or do you have to on this? You know, it's a really good idea to put topping on here. So why don't I get some and we'll go ahead and put okay. it on here, okay? Pause it.